Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So it looks like we got to talk about that shooting in Houston again. You know, the one where the police union president came out afterward and said, don't you talk bad about our cops. You know, don't stir the pot against our officers. We got your number. Kind of making veiled threats. Well, now we know why they didn't want anybody talking about it. Turns out that warrant, the affidavit used to get the warrant, well, it was uh, entirely fabricated. It's what the latest reports are saying. The CIs, the confidential informants who were said to go and buy the heroin from this house, oh, that never happened. Wow. Oh, and the officer, one of the officers, uh, he had heroin in his car. Crazy. That's all public now. Now, I need to do a little bit of a disclosure notice and explain something before we get to the next part. In 2016, Houston PD targeted an independent journalist, even had him under surveillance. Wound up bringing him up on uh, trumped up charges, which of course were eventually wiped out, but they made his life uncomfortable for a while. Now I'm sure you're familiar with the concept of the thin blue line. Indie journalists work the same way, especially when it comes to a government agency targeting someone. When that happened, Every investigative independent journalist in the country started cultivating sources and contacts within the uh, Houston Police Department. So, let me tell you what I've heard, but first we're going to talk about the public face. The public face, the chief of police is out there saying, don't paint us all with a broad brush, isolated incident, few bad apples, same song and dance we always hear. And then the same song and dance we always hear about the victim. Demonizing them. Don't forget, you know, we didn't do this willy nilly. There was a 911 call of somebody who was maybe the mother of somebody who might have done heroin at this house, maybe. And they had drugs, a little bit of marijuana, a little bit of coke, and they had guns in Texas. Two shotguns, a Winchester, and a Remington. Not the weapons of a drug dealer. That's the public face. Now, from what I understand, maybe they were, uh, the private face is a little different. Maybe the private face is telling people to tear their mother cases apart. And that's what should be done. But they're not just doing it to the officers involved in the raid. They're doing it to the entire division. 200 people doesn't seem like they believe it's an isolated incident. At the same time as I'm criticizing him keeping it private, I want to give the chief of police credit for at least attempting to look into it. That is the right thing to do, but you don't need to do it. You need to bring in the FBI because there's going to be a whole bunch of questions you don't even want to ask, much less know the answer to. From what I understand in this division, you are going to find out that you have a, a lot of professional, lawful investigators. I'm not going to say ethical because I don't believe in the war on drugs, but they're operating within the law. And you've got a lot of officers who have seen one too many episodes of The Shield. If you actually do an investigation, that's what you're going to find out. Let me give you some questions that you're not going to want to ask. Where'd the heroin come from? Did it come out of the uh, evidence locker? Or are those officers out there shaking people down? What about the CIs? Are they paid? Confidential informants, are they paid? The ones that were mentioned in this, they didn't do anything though. Where'd the money go? Certainly, this guy didn't pay him to do nothing. If he did, they probably would have said they did it. There's probably going to be a whole slew of charges come out of this if you actually want to look into it. But you need to bring somebody in that doesn't have loyalty, that doesn't want to cover for their buddy, that isn't part of that thin blue line. And please stop demonizing the victim. Willy-nilly, you and I both know 
that that 911 call was not enough to get a warrant for a no-knock raid. That's where that marijuana and coke, that's where that evidence came from. In court, that would be suppressed. But you got no problem talking to the press about it. Something that wouldn't be allowed in a courtroom, you're using to slander dead people? Really? And then, there is one other question I have. one of these officers had heroin in his car, what makes you think he didn't have pot and coke? Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good night.